Today we are going to talk about decorative design pattern. In order to understand decorative design pattern better, what we are going to do is we are going to create one interface called eye calculator. And in this interface, we are going, just going to implement one method called add. This add method takes in two parameters and returns the result by adding the two input parameters. We are going to create a concrete class that implements the eye calculator Let's suppose the concrete class that we are going to create is called calculator. Under normal circumstances, what we will do is we will create an instance of a calculator class into our main application, which pass in two parameters to the add method. The add method will add the two parameters that were passed in and returns the result back to the main. If I wanted to add caching and logging behavior into my add method, the normal way that most of the developers will do is they will add the logging and the caching inside the add method. But in that case, it will be very difficult to read the actual business rules. We can separate the logging and caching behavior of the add method and move it out from it by using the decorative design pattern. While implementing the de decorative design pattern, what we do is we create separate concrete class which implements the same interface called eye calculator and then we implement the logging separately from the actual method. If we want to implement caching, we can do so by implementing the same interface eye calculator and creating a separate concrete, concrete class. The way it works is instead of main instead of main calling the concrete class calculator, what it does is it calls the logging calculator first. Inside the logging calculator, then it calls the caching calculator. Inside the cal caching calculator, then it calls the actual calculator, which adds the two numbers and returns the result back to the caching calculator. The caching calculator will cache the results and return it back to the logging calculator. And then the logging calculator will return the results to the main application. Decorative design pattern is very fle flexible. If, we, if I want to add validation, that is to say the two input parameters should not be null, then I can add one more concrete implementation of the same eye calculator and then inside that I can do the validation. If the validation fails, I don't have to send. I will terminate the, I will return the result directly from here and will not call the subsequent concrete classes. But if it does passes, then I will go to the cal logging calculator. Logging calculator will call the caching calculator. If the caching calculator was previously executed and the results are still valid in the cache, then instead of calling the calcul actual calculator, it will just return the result directly to the logging and it will go to the main behavior. The advantages of using the decorative design pattern is that you can remove the cross-cutting concerns from the actual method and put it into a separate implementation. Let's look as look at an example. We will first try to implement uh, add method without using decorative design pattern. In order to do so, what I have done over here is created an interface called eye calculator. Inside this interface, there is only one method called add. Then I have created another class called old calculator. Old calculator implements this interface called eye calculator and since there was only one method add so it implements that as well. The actual business rule for add is just in one line that is result is equal to x plus y. The remaining line of code is just the logging and I have not even implemented caching inside this as yet. The first line of code locks the name of the name of the class and the name of the method. The second line of code logs the name of the input parameter then it starts the stopwatch stops the stopwatch and then it logs the time it required to do the calculation then it locks the return result and then it at the very end it says that it is about to exit try block if there are if there are any exceptions then the exceptions are logged as well let's see how this will be implemented in the main program. In the main program, I am creating an instance of the old calculator and then I am passing two parameters and calling. 
I'm waiting over here to just so that I can have enough time to read the results. Let's run it and see the result. Now you can see all the logging that has taken place into the add method. Let's try to analyze add method from the perspective of solid principle of object-oriented designing. In the term solid, S stands for single responsibility principle. Add method, the implementation of the add method is anything but single responsibility principle because it is doing way more than adding just the two numbers. It is trying to implement logging behavior inside it as well. In the term solid, O stands for open for extension and closed for modification. The reason is this add method is not closed for modification. If tomorrow I wanted to implement caching, then I have to modify this add method and add caching behavior inside this as well. So it violates first two letters of solid principle of object-oriented designing, that is single responsibility principle and open for extension and close for modification. It is not close for modification. If we implement this add method using decorative design pattern, then we will achieve both the first two letters of solid principle of object-oriented designing. Now we are going to implement add method by using decorative design pattern. In order to implement decorative design pattern, I will still be using the same interface that is I calculator and it will still have one method called add. I will go ahead and create another concrete class and this concrete class will implement the interface called I calculator. As you could see, this follows the single responsibility principle. This concrete class is only responsible for adding the two numbers and returning the results. It's not responsible for doing anything else or trying to address cross-cutting concerns like validation, caching, or logging. To address the cross-cutting concerns, I have created other concrete class. Let's start with logging. I've created a concrete class called logging calculator. It implements the same interface called iCalculator. I have removed all the logging behavior from the cal calculator class and put it over here. I've created a constructor for logging calculator and I take a concrete class as a parameter to the constructor. This concrete class could be any concrete class. It could either be a calculator, it could be a caching, it could be a validation. The logging calculator doesn't know what concrete class it is. Once the concrete, uh, logging calculator have implemented its uh, logging behavior, then it will pass control to the next concrete class. I have created another class called caching calculator. This caching calculator has a constructor which takes in a parameter of type I calculator. It takes in a concrete implementation and saves it as a private variable. The add method of the caching calculator is responsible for implementing the caching behavior. Once it has implemented the caching behavior, it will then call the add method. It will call the add method on the concrete class that was passed to it. Again, the concrete class that is passed to the caching calculator it could either be a logging or it could be a calculator class. The caching calculator does not know what type of concrete implementation is passed to it. Let's try to use all the three concrete classes that we have created previously into our main application. One thing that needs to be noted in this Im implementation of a decorative design pattern is that each concrete class follows solid principle of object-oriented designing as single responsibility principle. Calculator is just responsible for doing calculation. Cache calculator is just responsible for doing caching and logging is just responsible for doing logging and hence it follows single responsibility principles. It follows the O, letter O in solid that is open for extension and close for modification. If tomorrow I have to add validation, I don't have to touch any of the existing concrete class, hence close for modification. And I will just create another concrete class, let's call it validation calculator, which will implement the validation and hence open for extension. Decorative design pattern follows the last in first out principle. That is the last, it's just like a, 
a stack of plates. The last plate that goes in is the first one to come out. Let's see how it is implemented. First I created an instance of a class called calculator. Then I take, take this instance of a calculator and passed in as a constructor to a caching calculator. Then I take an instance of a caching calculator and passed in to an instance of logging calculator. And then I call a add method on the logging calculator. When I invoke the add method on the logging calculator, the first code that will get executed is into the logging cal calculator. Then it will pass control to the cache calculator. The cache calculator code will get executed. And then and finally, the calculator class will be executed. The order in which these concrete classes are created is very important. Let's run this. So what type of results we get? As you could see, the results are pretty much the same as we saw it pre in the previous implementation, except that this time it has been implemented using decorative design pattern and which follows the solid principle of object-oriented design. Using decorative design pattern to implement cross-cutting concerns like logging, caching, validation, security, it does look like a lot of work. Unity uses interface interception and decorative design pattern to help you address cross-cutting concerns like logging, caching. All you have to do is register your interface with Unity and Unity will automatically decorate your class with behavior that you have registered with it. Please watch my other videos on caching and logging using Unity.